In this video, I want to go inside of the atom and talk about the three major subatomic particles that make up the parts of the atom. This description of an atom in terms of its three subatomic particles is known as the nuclear model of the atom. And remember that an atom is the smallest particle or the smallest piece of any of the elements on the periodic table that retains or keeps all the same properties of that element. The properties can be physical. Remember, is something brittle or does it have a particular shiny color? Does it have luster or can it be, um, is it ductile? Can be can it be pulled into a wire? And there are chemical properties which pertain to how that element reacts with other elements in chemical reactions. Inside each atom, there are subatomic particles. So they're smaller than an atom, so they're known as subatomic. The proton is one of those very important subatomic particles, and it has a positive electrical charge. We'll be talking a little bit more about charges later, but you can remember proton and positive is both starting with P, so they go together. Then there is an electron, or one or more, which has a negative electrical charge, so it's the exact opposite of the proton. And then most atoms also include one or more neutrons, which is another subatomic particle, but this one has no charge. You can find the protons and the neutrons together in the nucleus. So in the center of the atoms, we find these two particular subatomic particles. And then the electrons are outside of the nucleus, still connected to it, attracted to it. And so in this diagram, we see our electrons kind of being sent in little paths around the nucleus. But there is a distance in between. And there are various analogies that are shared to try to describe that distance. And of course, since we've never actually seen an atom, there's quite a bit of, of difference in the different analogies. But I'm going to use one here just to start with. That if the nucleus would be the size of a golf ball, then the distance between that nucleus and the electrons is somewhere around two to three miles. So the electrons are very far away from the nucleus. And if we could see the nucleus the size of the golf ball, we, we, we would not be able to see the electrons because they are so tiny, they would still be microscopic. So atoms are very, very small. Let's start by looking at the protons. We're going to talk about each subatomic particle individually. Protons determine the identity of the atom. That is their job. So all the atoms of a particular element will have the same number of protons. And if that number of protons changes, you have a different element. For example, hydrogen has one proton, oxygen has eight protons, iron has 26 protons, and gold has 79 protons. As I already mentioned, protons have a positive charge, and it is a charge equal to a positive one. And protons also have mass. Of course, we know that we have mass. Matter has mass. And even though atoms are very small, they have mass. And protons have a mass of one atomic mass unit, or one AMU. Next, I want to talk about neutrons. Now, neutrons have a very important role. They are the things that help stabilize the nucleus of the atom, keep it together. Because protons have a positive charge, and you know from working with magnets and north and south poles, things that have the same charge, or in the case of magnets, the same magnetic force, tend to repel. Opposites attract, the same things repel. So protons would repel each other if the neutrons were not present. They help glue the nucleus together. But if there are too many neutrons present, then we end up with a radioactive atom, or that is an atom that is capable of undergoing nuclear fission, which is what we have in a nuclear reactor or a nuclear bomb. So neutrons are important. They're present to help hold the nucleus together, but they are neutral. They have no electrical charge. They don't contribute anything to the charge or potential charge of an ion. Neutrons are large. They are about the same size as a proton, so they also are given a mass of one atomic mass unit because they are roughly equal to the proton in size. In general, the number of neutrons that you find in any particular atom is either equal to or greater than the number of protons. The only exception to this is hydrogen, because most of the hydrogen we have present does not have a neutron at all. 
but all the other elements will have at least the same number of neutrons as protons and often more. Finally, moving on to our third subatomic particle, the electrons, as already mentioned, have a negative charge, and their negative charge is equal to negative one. So electrons perfectly balance out protons. One proton and one electron together would have a charge of zero because there's one positive charge and one negative charge. Electrons are too small to affect the mass of the atom. An electron is about the size or by the mass of one two thousandth of an atomic mass unit. So even though atoms have electrons in them, they are not counted at all when it comes to counting the mass. The number of electrons can vary. In general, it will equal the number of protons when we're just talking about neutral atoms because there's no charge present and so the positives and negatives balance each other out. But the number of electrons will not equal the number of protons if you have an ion. If you have a charged particle, there is an unequal number of electrons to protons, and depending upon which way it's going, you end up with a positive or negatively charged ion. Electrons are important because they affect the reactivity of the atom. What it reacts to, how it reacts, that's electrons' roles. Protons are involved in identity, neutrons help keep the protons in the nucleus, and electrons determine how an atom reacts. Your periodic table is very helpful in learning about the subatomic particles that are present in these atoms. So if you're looking at a typical box from a periodic table, as I have illustrated here, the atomic number, which in this case is found in the upper left-hand corner, is equal to the number of protons. So C for carbon, our atomic number of six, tells us that we have six protons. And if this is a neutral atom, it's not an ion, then we know that our electrons will be equal to the protons, or in this case, we will also have six electrons to go along with those six protons. The atomic mass is going to equal the number of protons plus the number of neutrons because, as I've already mentioned, the protons and the neutrons have the atomic mass unit of one each. So if we look at our atomic mass number down here, we see 12.011, and so that is the protons plus the neutrons. The next slide I'll talk about what these decimal points are all about. So it's important to keep your periodic table handy, especially as we move forward into this course, because there's a lot of helpful information that can be found on each one of these atomic symbol blocks. Now, getting to why the atomic mass had decimal points, the atoms of a same element can have different numbers of neutrons present, and so that's going to affect our mass numbers. For example, carbon has three naturally occurring isotopes, because isotopes are what we call the same element with different number of neutrons. Carbon-12 has six neutrons, carbon-13 has seven neutrons, and carbon-8 has eight neutrons and is also radioactive. If you remember, I said too many neutrons can make an element or can make an atom radioactive. These are all carbon, whether it's carbon-12 or carbon-13 or carbon-14, it can be used by the body to do whatever carbon is needed for, to build one of those biological molecules, to be part of photosynthesis. They are all carbon, but they all have slightly different masses because they have different numbers of neutrons. So the atomic masses are different for each isotope, and when the atomic mass values are calculated on the periodic table, they actually are average values that include all the isotopes in the proportion that they occur naturally. So the atomic mass for carbon of 12.011 is telling us that most carbon atoms have a mass of 12. Most of the carbon present, uh, close to 100% of the carbon present in the world, has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons, but there are enough of carbon-13 and carbon-14 present to make it that this can't be a perfect 12 when you take an average. It's important to note that the atomic symbol that we see on the periodic table does not specify the isotope that is present for that particular atom. 
if we have a C for carbon, that represents all isotopes of carbon, not the particular one that you are talking about. To specify a certain isotope, we can write the mass after the name, as you saw on the previous slide. For example, carbon-14 is the isotope of carbon with a mass of 14, which by subtracting the six protons from 14, you end up with eight neutrons. The atomic symbol also can be written with the mass as a superscript on the left-hand side of the symbol and the atomic number as a subscript. This is exactly opposite from how it is found in the periodic table block where the atomic number is on top and the mass is on the bottom. In this case, the atomic mass is on the top and it's all found on the left-hand side of the atomic symbol and the atomic number or the protons, the number of protons is on the bottom. If you get confused about which one is which, remember that the mass number is always going to be larger than the atomic number because elements except for hydrogen are all going to have neutrons in them. And so since the mass contains protons plus neutrons, the number will be bigger than the atomic number, which is just protons. We've already worked with ions in naming ionic compounds, so you already know that ions are atoms or molecules that have a charge, whether it's a positive charge or a negative charge. Positive ions, then, have less electrons or fewer electrons than they do have protons, and so they don't have enough negative charge, so the positive charge is what wins out. Negative ions, also known as anions, have more electrons than protons, and so they would have more negative charge present. The positive charge can't cancel it all out. The charge symbols, how much of charge is present in a particular atom, is given as a superscript again, but this time on the right side of the atomic symbol. And that positive or negative could be written before or after the number. So in our first example here of sodium, here is a particular isotope of sodium being discussed, but it is a sodium ion because it has a positive charge here, and of course there's an invisible one, so it has a plus one charge, and this particular isotope of sodium has a mass of 23. So this is telling you that you're looking at a particular atom with that mass number, but it is an ion of sodium. And then my second example here is a phosphate ion. It's a polyatomic ion because we have two capital letters, so that tells us we have two different atoms present, two different elements, and it has a charge of a negative three. Remember, this also could be written three negative. Remember that the subscripts that you find in polyatomic ions are part of the formula of that ion. They are not pertaining to the charge. So this is telling you that there are four oxygen present but the charge on that is a negative three. So here's a chance for you to check your understanding. We'll go over this in class, but what can you tell from this symbol written below about the atom? What do you know about these three subatomic particles? How many of each are present in this particular atom?